simply pour in some denatured ethanol. This is the EcoSmart fireplace. If you've got to have a fireplace, this is the way to go. It burns at about a 90% efficiency. You don't need a flue because it's burning with such efficiency. A lot of standard fireplaces, you'd have to have a flue with a chimney going up into the atmosphere and you'd be seeing smoke and different kinds of particulates going up into the atmosphere through a burning process. Indoor air quality is not harmed at all. This is also very safe. This is made from post-consumer content glass. This is a company called Ceramic Tile Design. This particular product has up to 86% recycled content. It's kind of an unbelievable number for a tile. We've got about 86% recycled content in the darker colors. As contamination issues become more apparent in the clear glass, you have less post-consumer content. This is their bamboo mosaic tile, recycled aluminum decoratives. These are actually made from post-industrial bamboo manufacturing waste. I believe it's a furniture manufacturer that has the waste product. This particular brand of cabinets, they're doing a marine grade plywood full box construction. So it's urea formaldehyde free. And again, the full box construction means that it's gonna last for a very, very long time. If it lasts a long time, then it doesn't end up in the landfill. What we look for in the cabinets is basically nothing with any added urea formaldehyde. So there are several different companies that we work with. This is NEF and they use a marine grade plywood box construction which has a phenol resin. They also screw the cabinets together as opposed to gluing them together. This is actually a textured laminate. One of the ideas in perfecting the, the look of the laminates is because you can have the look of wood and leave the tree in the forest. So uh, we get to save a few trees that way and it also makes it less expensive for the customer. And it's a very durable product. These cabinets, they're made with pure bond plywood. It's a good example of biomimicry. If you can mimic what is done in the environment, you're generally gonna be making better choices for the environment. Here again is the pure bond materials. The Columbia Forest Products item is really unique in that it mimics the way a muscle adheres to rock. So unlike a lot of the formaldehyde glues that will off-gas continuously, sometimes for years and years in a home, creating very poor indoor air quality, you don't use any formaldehyde in a box construction made with Pure Bond. Another product that's really interesting, it's called Paper Stone. And this is made from post-consumer content. Paper, paper fiber, believe it or not. Then it can be used in bathrooms and kitchens. Because it's so strong, it can be cantilevered. When you put your hands on this product, unlike a stone product, this is warm. People often ask, was it heat resistant? It's paper fiber. Will it burn? It's heat resistant up to about 350 degrees. Why wouldn't I get stone where I can put a hot pan down on it? No matter what product you have, it has, it has to be sealed. And when you put anything that hot down on a countertop, you break the seal. So it's not a good idea to put something that hot on anything whether it's stone or paper stone. The other thing is most stone is quarried in ways that both environmentally and socially is irresponsible. Over here we have one of the countertop materials. This is called ice stone. It's made in Brooklyn, New York, and it is 80% post-industrial material, uh, basically fly ash concrete and um, uh, glass. Um, in this particular case, there's a lot of shells being used from the beach, actually, where the factory is located, there is also 20% of Portland cement, so 80% is recycled content. This Curie board, it's made from sugar sorghum. So it's the byproduct of growing sugar. I believe it's sugar that's grown for the purpose of manufacturing alcohol. Curie board stains beautifully, it finishes beautifully, and it's eye candy. <laughs> I just love the way it looks when it's wet. You can imagine what it looks like when it's stained. It takes color beautifully. It really sings to a design sense. Finding an FSC oak is a little bit difficult. A lot of the commodity woods, the price is so low on those commodity products that asking those 
producers to come up with the FSC logo hasn't been easy. Look at how wide that plank is. It's an engineered floor. Most of Europe has been using engineered floors for a lot longer than people in the U.S. have. The thing about engineered floors that are great is that you're only using the top layer with the expensive hardwood. Cork flooring. Cork has a number of things about it that make it environmentally preferable. Cork renews pretty quickly. You peel it off a tree, so it's actually more like a fungus. It's antimicrobial and antibacterial by nature, naturally fire retardant. One of the things that makes it particularly appealing to me with a four-year-old around the house is that it has acoustic properties. I actually find some communities requiring cork in between floors of high-rise apartments because of its acoustic properties. The cork product that you're looking at here is a plank product that goes together very easily and it's relatively inexpensive. It has a very long lifespan. It was actually the product that Frank Lloyd Wright put down at Falling Water. This is our outdoor living area. You can see the FSC logo. This is, I believe, a machiche. Machiche is a species of wood. It's uh, South American. It's very, very heavy. So if you compare this to teak, for example, this would have a longer lifespan. Your flooring is Ipe. This is another FSC product. Very, very dense, very, very heavy, and very, very durable. It's a very complicated process to become FSC certified, to show that you're both environmentally and socially responsible. All of our ambient light is created through LED lights, and we're a big supporter of LED lights. They are mercury-free. Unlike fluorescent lighting, LED lighting has no issue in terms of the disposal end. So cradle-to-cradle -cradle LED lighting is a better choice, unless you're going with a mercury-free fluorescent fixture. LEDs also last a lot longer, so you don't have to change them as often. They are more expensive to purchase, but that's a very limited viewpoint. Uh, if you're looking at the global cradle-to-cradle -cradle cost, which is the way we'd like everybody to look at things, it's actually probably less expensive in the long run. 